Hello all, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 82. Today we'll talk about vaccine hesitancy, Nebraska flying blind, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, statement on masks, and uh, my the three trusted sources I tend to go to, if that, that might help you. Uh, so first, I think uh, this uh, article uh, about an Alabama doctor's quote, and, and I've heard other doctors and nurses say the same thing. So this isn't just an Alabama experience. This is happening all over the country now, right now. So this critical care doctor talking about one of the last things they do before they're intubated is beg me for the vaccine. And I have to hold their, their hand and tell them I'm sorry, but it's too late. And then a couple days, days later when they're dead, I hug their family members and I tell them the best way to honor their loved one is to get vaccinated. They cry. They tell me they didn't know. They thought it was a hoax. They thought it was political. They thought it because they had a certain blood type, they were okay. Uh, but they were wrong and they wish they could go back. And so this is what's really frustrating a lot of doctors and nurses across the country. This is all preventable. Uh, around 98, 99% of these deaths are all preventable if people would just get vaccinated. And it's very frustrating to them. Uh, back before, you know, people didn't have time to prepare. We had time to prepare. This all could have been avoided and it's not going to be avoided, unfortunately. Uh, as we're seeing basically is that the, the new Delta variant is spreading all over the country and so more and more counties are popping up from orange to red to dark red here uh, and as we've talked about previously it's pretty much worse in the places that have the least vaccination. We've got this area and so uh, unvaccinated people means this uh, next surge is maybe just as bad as November, December in those really low vaccinated areas. There are areas in western Nebraska where even the elderly are only 20-30% vaccinated. So I think uh, hospitals are probably going to hit capacity in the next month or two in, in rural areas and that could overflow even in urban areas and cause a problem. Um, so here you see, and the other thing that's a little concerning is that even these dark blue, they're still not vaccinated enough. So what you're seeing, even in Boston, for example, they're turning red too. So they're still, until you hit 80, 90% vaccinated, you're still not going to be uh, keeping this down in a community. And, and so many communities are just nowhere close to that though. Other problem is Nebraska's flying blinds. People are trying to recreate Nebraska data. So, you know, previously I've shown that this was grayed out. They're trying to recreate this and we can't verify any of these numbers right now. So we don't know where Nebraska is right now. They could be heading this way too and probably are, but we just don't know because the state's hidden its data. Hopefully they'll put it back out there again like they do because we're going to need to know this. Um, you know, locally here in Lincoln, Lancaster County, I think our dashboard, I trust what our health department's putting out, and I think this is pretty good data. Uh, although I'd say that the numbers are actually underreporting now because there's so many people who can do their own home test kits, and because Test Nebraska closed down, there are there are more cases going undiagnosed, and I think that so this num these numbers are probably worse than that. Not because the health department's not reporting, it's because it's not getting reported to the health department. The thing that has us most concerned is the hospitalization rate. This is a very steep rise. We're already at 41 hospitalizations. Uh, we're back to where we were in February from a hospitalization standpoint. And keep in mind, these hospitalizations, they're based on the number of cases back here. Well, that's already doubled to tripled. So that 41 could re re quickly go to 60 to 80 to 100. Uh, I hope we don't get to the point where we're overwhelming our hospitals. I think what you'll see is the proportion that's coming from outside of Lincoln Lancaster County is really going to take off in the coming weeks. And so this creates capacity issues. And so we could be hitting a flattening the curve scenario where we could be overwhelming our hospitals again. Uh, and if this, this uh, surge happens right as we, for example, have a Garth Brooks concert, Husker football games at full capacity, and if we were to send all our kids back to school with no masks, we would overwhelm our hospitals, even with the vaccination rate in Lincoln, Lancaster County. So we got to do something. Um, you know, we could make travel and events safe by basically doing these type of things that others that are smarter are doing. So Germany, for example, has very low rates and they've kept them low rate, but that's because they do things like, you know, green passes. Uh, so you can go places you're fully vaccinated and, and have a negative test, but you've got to have a verification system and uh, we don't have that. So uh, it's going to get ugly here in the next few weeks, I think. Uh, you know, I, I've used this Will Rogers quote I love, but I think we need, he forgot about a fourth kind of man. And that fourth kind of the man is the one who keeps peeing on the electric fence over and over again and just doesn't learn. And it looks like that's, uh, we've got a lot of Americans that don't even learn once they pee on the electric fence. Uh, so, you know, that gives even more reason why I think we need masks in school. And of course, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with, I thought, very clear, uh, concise guideline and recommendations on Monday this week. Uh, pretty close to the CDC with one caveat. The CDC still is saying that masking is only required for the unvaccinated. The problem is that's really hard, hard to, to implement in reality to have a verification system at school entry, for example. So AAP is pretty much saying, look, we, we're going to have to have everybody in the schools wear a mask right uh, to start with uh, because most schools just don't have that resource to monitor vaccine status and force mask policies based on status. We're just not going to have that in place in time. And so I think we're going to have universal masking in schools that are doing the right thing anyway. I don't know if all are going to do it, but boy, they should. Uh, and so, 
you know, CDC guidelines were clear on masks as well for the not fully vaccinated. But I think the AAP did a good job of really pointing out, like, look, that's just not pragmatic. So I think, uh, at least in Lincoln, I think our schools will be starting with masks in August. Uh, you know, more on the J&J, &J, we still don't have enough studies here. More and more are saying to consider consider that booster. I wouldn't stop anybody, but I think uh, the data is still not quite good enough yet to know for sure. Uh, again, unfortunately, stay tuned on that one. Um, last thing I want to talk about is just trusted sources of information. So, so where do I go? I actually, right now, there are three top sources I go to. I really like the Your Local Epidemiologist uh, Facebook page. Uh, she's doing a wonderful job of just basically putting it into a concise format, reviewing the numbers, usually within a day or two of them coming out. And they've created some really nice visuals. So like I really like the one uh, from today about, uh, about vaccine hesitancy, kind of reviewing this stuff. Uh, the one that I keep hearing over and over again, which has no real basis in science, is this any uh, long-term side effects on infertility. Uh, and that's one of those conspiracy things that's sort of like right out of the, the Taliban ban playbook. The reason we couldn't get polio out of Afghanistan and Pakistan as the Taliban was spreading this rumor that the government was trying to cause infertility uh, to get rid of the people in that population. It's like, you know, that's a Taliban conspiracy theory, but people are falling for it. Uh, you know, and this is near and dear to my heart. I have three daughters uh, that are 20, 22, and 24. This is really important to me because someday I want to be Grandpa Bob. Uh, all three of them are vaccinated. I have no worries whatsoever about infertility. Uh, and there's not a mechanism for it. There's no evidence behind it. Uh, and so there are no infertility or, or DNA changes that you need to worry about. Uh, those are both, those are just myths that are pushed out there without any basis in science. Uh, the other uh, thing, you know, here's an example. She's also very pragmatic about things. Okay, what do I do with, with my kids? How would I travel? How would I set my risk tolerance? And so I think, you know, Dr. Caitlin uh, Gentlini has got, uh, she and her crew put together some really nice visuals. So I like this one, for example, on COVID-19 risk tolerance for traveling with kids, extracurricular activities. I get a lot of questions like this, and I tend to refer, refer people to, to her visual, which I think does a very good job. Uh, the other two sources of information I go to on a really uh, good basis, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's her for the pragmatic, what should I do stuff. Uh, if you're a clinician, I think the best up weekly update is Dr. Daniel Griffin's update on TWIV, uh, This Week in Virology. He basically reviews all the studies that have come out on treatment and all, and, and he's a nice guy. I, I, so I, this is my sort of Saturday morning mowing the lawn podcast. And if you want the broad international policy perspective, I still like Michael Osterholm's update out of SIDRAP. Uh, he's going to, he's back to doing these weekly. Uh, typically releasing them on a Thursday, uh, and that's my go-to source. So if you say, how do, how do, how's Bob Browner stay up to date? I go to the, these three sources are my go-tos. Uh, there's a few others like New England Journal of Medicine's podcasts and uh, Johns Hopkins Public Health on Call, but these are the three I hit first. So short update today, but uh, we have a lot to worry about. I, hopefully there's going to be some uh, return to reason in uh, some of our state po health policy in the near future. Uh, we'll see what happens, uh, and hopefully this is helpful to you. Again, disclaimer, these are my opinions, not just everybody here, but uh, you know I I've got the science and the links in the bottom if you want to verify yourself.